everyone, and welcome to Inside Leather History, a fireside chat. I'm Doug O'Keefe, and I am the host and the co-producer of these chats with Mistress Joanne Gaddy. The Fireside Chats are a program of the Leather Archives and Museum. Today on Zoom, I'm interviewing Brian, who is a rubber man from Taiwan. Brian's going to talk with us a little bit today about the kinky scene, the rubber scene in Taiwan, so that we can understand a little bit about that. So welcome, Brian. Uh, hello. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Uh, happy to have you on here with us. So. Where are you from in Taiwan? Uh, I'm from the capital city, so I'm from Taipei. Okay. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your growing up in Taipei and about your family, your world. Uh, okay. I, I was born and raised in Taipei, and I uh, lived in Taipei till 26. And then I, was, I went to the UK for study. Uh, and then uh, in the UK, I had uh, my first experience in the, in the BDSM scene. Ah. Uh, yes. And then from 2002, I'm uh, living and working in the Netherlands. Okay. Yeah. Take us back to Taipei. How yeah. did you have any idea about the gay scene, the kinky scene, anything at all? No, I don't think I'm, I'm really aware of that because I think uh, in Taipei it was uh, pretty hidden in uh, like in, 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 in the closet. I mean, the whole, the whole kinky scene at that time. And I think uh, Taiwan starts to progress to a, a, a dem more democratic, more modern and more... Um, open society since the 90s. I see. Did you have any idea about homosexuality? So my junior high school was in, in, a, in a boy only school. And then my senior high school is another mm -hmm. uh, boy only school for three years. And so constantly we have, we, we encounter all kinds of uh, uh, topic from like homosexual topic. Um, but then the teacher doesn't even talk about sex that much. So whenever there's an introduction in the textbook about, uh, um, about gender or about uh, 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 different organs that, that different genders have, uh, the teacher simply just skip that chapter. So then you, you know what kind of, how, how conservative that is for, for Taiwan at that time. So that's around the, the 80s, yeah. Uh, so, okay. yeah, so I, I, I only went to the, the, the gay club when I'm 18. Tell me about that. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, a, a gay club in, in Taipei, which was famous, uh, but then now it has already closed. Uh, the what name was, was the funky. name of it. Sorry, the name of it was uh, Funky. Okay. Yeah. So so we used to meet uh, people there. So uh, we chat with people on the internet, and then we we then of course we have a lot of uh, chat buddies, and then we would really just uh, go there to hang out. How did you learn yeah. about it? Um. Well, actually, I learned a lot of things from the internet. So when I'm in, in university, I, uh, it was the first time that I was on uh, internet relay chat. So that was IRC. Uh, so then I met uh, people from America, people from Australia, and then also, of course, people from Taiwan. So then we had a uh, chat about, yeah, we can uh, go to the clubs or mm -hmm. we can go uh, meeting up or hit like yeah something like that so then we we went there and hang out so tell me what were your impressions of the bar funky when you first went there it was quite interesting uh because most of the the people are young so like you know similar age so 
I think uh, most of the, the 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 people are were between eighteen to to twenty eight. I think twenty eight or thirty. I mean, from the look, um, yeah, and and because I I enjoy music and dancing, so so that's what I did, and and it was really nice, you know, just have a lot of um, to have. To, to see a lot of interesting people and maybe uh, cute cute boys and then uh, sexy guys. Yeah, so it was definitely uh, very interesting, yeah. So tell me about your first gay experiences, not your first kink, but your first gay experiences. Uh, once there was uh, a guy from the internet who was hosting a, a kind of like birthday party. So he invited, around uh, 20 people to to his house and then we're just you know chatting and then meeting up and then um, celebrate eating cake and singing happy birthday to to him so uh, that was also interesting to to really you know see see uh, similar peoples like like me like us so that was definitely uh, quite quite an experience yeah. What did you learn about yourself in those situations? Yeah, I think I think you will see people that that you find it interesting, but you don't really know who he is, and then you will ask around, and then um, uh, most of the time I was too shy to to really just just go to him and then and then uh, introduce myself and then start to chat, but most of the time I was like. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for a couple of days and then if I see him in the in the chat rooms and then I will send a message that yo uh, I think I saw you at the party and then you know start to chat a bit and then see uh, what's going what 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 will bring from that. So you went to the UK. How was the gay scene where you were located and where were you actually in the UK? I in the, in. Well, I arrived there in the beginning of the summer. So during the summer, I was in London. So I was uh, going clubbing at GAY and, uh, and, and have it most of the time, <laughs> most of the weekends. And then at that time, because uh, every, every night when I, no, not every night, every Saturday night when I left uh, GAY, uh, it would be like three or four o'clock in the, in the morning. So then I would just go on, go to the internet cafe there. It's called Easy Everything. Uh, and then I'll just spend probably one, one pound to uh, spend two hours or three hours. And then until there's a first bus, then I go back uh, to the dorm. Yeah. Did you, what did you learn about being gay in the UK? It is certainly more uh, open than in Taiwan. That's what I experienced because I think, uh, in Taiwan, everyone is holding back and then is, you know, a little bit shy because uh, the, 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 the whole atmosphere at that time was, was still uh, kind of like stepping from conservative to towards more open. And then uh, people have an idea about the gender uh, uh, difference or gender or uh, identification, but it is still in the very beginning uh, phase, because I think from for Taiwan it only starts with uh, from two thousand. Then you know because there are several tragedies in happened in the in the society. Then uh, really the society starts to rethink about uh, the gender issue more carefully, and then there are uh, laws and regulations uh, set up to protect uh, more different, uh, more people from, for, for, for their difference in the, in the sexual orientation. Uh, then the, this, this Taiwanese society was kind of like, you know, went boom, like, you know, really grow in, in that sense to, to a very open society. So at, at year 2000, uh, 
the UK is more more uh, open. And because there's also these series that uh, Queer as Folk, yes, that uh, was the 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 original British version was just shown on TV. So then I think um, the whole society is more is also starting to uh, to open to to acceptance to to gay people. Tell us about your first exposure to kink. It was kind of stupid, actually, because I think I saw some picture from from someone on the on, well on one of the uh, the websites that has the tendency of BDSM, and then I start chatting with this guy in Denmark. So we chat the whole summer, I think, almost every day. Okay. Yeah. So then he was telling me a lot of, I don't know whether his experience or his fantasy or his just, you know, stories. Uh, because eventually I didn't, I didn't meet him in person. So, so whether there's really this guy that I, I cannot be sure. But that, that was the hook that, that I started to look at uh, kinky things. What did he and tell you? He told me that he was uh, a slave boy of uh, a master. And then he was showing me uh, some pictures of uh, him being, uh, being the slave boy. And then he, of course, then he was also telling me his experience. And then I was asking about it. And then so we had a really interesting conversation. Anything in there that uh, got you very excited? Uh, yeah, I think all of it. Uh, and then uh, I start to um, try to do research and also adventures on, uh, so oh. eventually that, uh, that I uh, had my first bondage experience in 2001, I think. How yeah. did you uh, find the right people for this? I can hook up with some some people for sex that that you know like one night stand or something like there's no problem for that, but then if it's uh, for BDSM session, I think the most important thing is about trust. So mm. they need to make me feel that that I can trust them. Yeah, and then they have to trust me as well because, yeah. So so I think to build up this kind of uh, relationship that you really need to talk and then to really uh, even if you're seeing people for the first time but then probably you have already talked for a, a lengthy of time beforehand mm -hmm. then you really uh, take the, the initiative to to really meet the person when we were preparing for this interview yeah you told me that uh, the rubber scene is actually very popular in Taiwan. Uh, it is getting popular. It is getting more popular, yes. Why do you think that's the case? I think because thanks to the internet and you know Twitter, Facebook, uh, Recon, and then uh, there are more kinky people. Uh, there are more chance for kinky people to find each other. Do you know if there are any, for example, any fetish bars in Taiwan? Yes, yes. In Taiwan, there is, uh, well, at least I know one that is in Taipei that is uh, Commander D. I'm, I'm so, sorry, you're fading a little bit. Uh, Commander D. I think the owner has the, has the aims to, uh, to build up a, a safe space for, for king, king people. So of course, uh, most of the guests are still in, in their casual uh, dress most of the time, unless there's a, there's a party that requests dress code, then, uh, then definitely you, you have to uh, be in the right dress code to, to, to enter. You also mentioned that Lycra is uh, very popular in Taiwan. Yes, yes. Tell us a bit about that. 
Um, there's a very uh, there's a very popular uh, Spider-Man society. <laughs> so a lot of Spider-Man, Peter Parker, in in all around Taiwan. So um, uh, when they meet up, they will all wear uh, the Spider-Man suit. So you see uh, a dozen of Spider-Man gather gathering together. So huh. especially during Pride Walk, then uh, it, it will be quite interesting to see. The, the Spider-Mans are everywhere. Uh, that's because that that uh, there's uh, there's a fetish about uh, Zentai Lycra. So it's like the, the full suit, but in Lycra. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and they also have uh, parties and activities uh, regularly. Well, not during the pandemic, of course, but then uh, before, and hope, hopefully after the pandemic that, that it will carry on. You're in talking a lot about the fetish scene in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. You mentioned private parties. You mentioned there's at least one club. Are there other uh, locations, other situations for men or women who want to participate? I think the, the major problem, major issues for, for Taiwanese fetish scene now is like, uh, where it's very difficult to find a good location to hold a, a party or a, a social gathering. Uh, for social gathering, it's, it's easier because then you can always go to a bar, you can go, go to a, a club to meet up. But if you want to uh, do certain kind of play, then the location is very difficult. Um, Especially for for rubber men, it's very difficult because um, usually when you need when you put on rubber, then you use powder or you use uh, the silicone uh, uh, to 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 yes. to wear it, and most of the time there's a smell and then there's uh, residuals that you know most of the case that uh, like the hotels or the the place the the place owner the landlord doesn't want to deal with it. Yeah. So eventually they, they don't want to rent these. And then, so that's why when, when I was in Chicago, when I was in MIR, that I see that MIR is using the, uh, uh, a community center that I was really uh, feeling, yeah, we should have that as well. But then, yeah, we don't have a gay community yet in, in Taipei. So most of the community centers are actually uh, more to the to the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So unless you know uh, some people really good, then otherwise it's very difficult to access that as well. But then that comes back to the to the situation that that you know um, how people will see this party or how people will see these kind of people. Yeah. Uh, because if if you're just a peasant, uh, pe if you're just a passenger on the road, they will think, oh, you're just having, you're just someone with the dress code, you're going to a party, you're doing cosplay, and then they're, they're fine with it. But if you're holding a, a kind of party, like, you know, next to your house or uh, next to your neighborhood, then, you know, you, people are afraid of being recognized yeah, yeah. by their, by their uh, friends or, or um, uh, familiar persons, um, yeah. Yeah. They, because they they are they don't know what the reaction would be. They are afraid that 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 if there are stigmas or witch hunt afterwards. So, yeah. so that's why it makes it more difficult. So that's the uh, the dilemma that that Taiwan fetish society is facing. Do you feel? The kinky community in Taiwan is as kinky as you have found in Europe? The kinkiness is the same, if not more. Um, but of course, there's, uh, there's difference. Um, I think in Europe, in America, there are more kinky bars and kinky parties uh, open for, for everyone to to enjoy. So for example, there are a lot of big parties around Europe, like Darklands, 
frozen. And then also in 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 um in the America, there's uh, up your valley, and then all those uh, parties or festivals, street festivals that you can just buy a ticket to enter to enjoy, or just you know watch and then see whether you like it, and then do your own research later, and then uh, and then find out whether you like it or not. Um, but in Taiwan, uh, these kind of things is not uh, openly done. So it's, it's because that in Taiwan, a lot of people are still uh, living with their family, if not with parents, but then with family, or you know, they are sharing uh, an, an apartment with uh, other friends. Mm. So, so that's why uh, most, there, there aren't these kind of open, open parties, but it becomes more like um, a mouse to mouse uh, activity. So if you know someone and then someone knows someone and then if when they decide to have a, a home party or a bigger version of the home party that they would rent uh, a certain kind of residence or like uh, maybe in a club or in a restaurant or in a, in a motel and then they, you got invited and then you will see a, a lot of people yeah. yeah so it's kind of like still not fully open to to public um yeah i i want to mention about how the development of of the rubber society in taiwan yes yes so yeah <laughs> um so i think in 2016 um i i was approached by uh by some rubber men in, in Taiwan. So, um, so then uh, from 2017 that uh, we had a small group of fetish people. Uh, um, mo most of the time is including, uh, is together, like the rubber men are together with the, the leather, leather men and also the, um, uh, the Spider-Man's group. So the yeah. Lycra guys, that we would uh, form a, a, a group to um, to also participate in the in the Pride Walk. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So um, ever since 17, uh, 2017, so we we have done it. Even last year, there there's a small group in Taiwan that was doing it. Because I think last year Taiwan was the only country, only major country that has still have Pride going on okay. because a lot of other countries are already in lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How big is so, the Pride Parade usually? Before the pandemic, it was really huge. It's like the biggest in, in East Asia. Uh, gay people from other cities, other Asian cities would fly into Taipei to oh. enjoy that. Oh, uh, so so most of the time we are joking that yeah during that week is the international week, so you will see people from Tokyo, you will see people from Japan, from South Korea, from China, from Hong Kong, uh, from Thailand, from Malaysia, from Singapore, all all coming together to uh, into Taiwan, because um, all the all these. Um, all these countries that I, I just mentioned are Asian neighborhood. Uh, their society is not that open to, to gay, to, right. to homosexual. Right. Um, they might have uh, pride, like in Tokyo, in Hong Kong, they do, um, in Bangkok as well, but then uh, I, it's not as popular as in Taiwan because the, the society itself is not that open. And not to mention that even like in Singapore, I think that uh, it is not even legal to, to hold these kind of uh, activities. So, so that's why it makes uh, the pride in Taipei uh, more interesting and more popular among the, the Asians.
you mentioned many different countries, but I, I don't recall you saying anything about mainland China. Is there a large yeah. group that comes from there to enjoy the parade? Uh, if they can get in, yes. Okay. But then that depends on their on their arrangement, because I think uh, the difficulties from mm -hmm. for for China, mainland Chinese people to travel to Taiwan is that um, it is not open to to everyone yet in mainland, mm -hmm. and I think um, they need to be in the right city and to and then they need to uh, make the applications. And if they pass, then then they can. And but I think the uh, the government, the Chinese government, also set up a lot of uh, restrictions, not because of gay, but because of Taiwan. Because I think uh, at one point in 2019 that they were uh, restricting the. Um, the backpacking trip to, to Taiwan. So you can only travel to Taiwan within a group. Oh. So then if you're traveling with a group, then yeah, you, you, you cannot enjoy uh, pride like that. Because yeah. I think if you're, if you're with a group, tour group in Taiwan, Taiwanese government requires that tour group to you know, stick together to uh, most of the time. Yeah. yeah, but then that's more the restriction from from the Chinese side, not from the the Taiwanese side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so I see more people, more Chinese people who is already uh, like students in other Asian countries, or they are working in other working and living in other Asian countries, or even in uh, America or in, in, in Europe that they fly to Taiwan. Oh, I see. Because, I see. yeah, they, they have never experienced the, the pride activity that speaks Mandarin Chinese. Yeah, yeah. 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 Where do you see the gay kinky scene in Taiwan, for example, in five years? Um, I hope that it will get bigger, but of course there's also um, difficulties and, and uh, the problem for, for Taiwan is that the Taiwanese kinky thing is that because of this restriction to the, to the home party style, so that means like you know, more mouse to mouse activities, that uh, you really need uh, enthusiast, enthusiasm from people that, especially from the host to hold these kind of uh, activities and parties. So, so I was chatting with a friend who's, you know, regularly organizing something for, for rubber and Zentai activities. Um, he was saying that he, he wanted to find volunteers that you know can carry on the the activities. Yes. So so that will be one challenge for for Taiwan. Why do you uh, think so? I think it's because of the <clears throat> the lifestyle. I think of course it's also changing. But in uh, like when I was thirty. A lot of people were expected to to get married and then to raise a family, and then um, they would eventually leave the the gay circle, yeah, and then come back to the to the normal route. But maybe there's a change because there's also gay marriage. So I hope, hopefully, that's gonna change, and then um, and then we will see more pe people who's more active. Uh, for these kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, because now it's more like that everyone was doing their own research. And then if they have done their research, then the second thing is that they have to take the initiative to, to experience advent uh, adventure. 
And the third one is that they need certain kind of luck in that adventure. So they meet a good person that doesn't ruin their first kinky experience. Otherwise, if their first time kinky experience was ruined, they would never come back to the kinky scene. Right. Yeah. Let's hope so. Yeah, I, I hope so. I believe that, yeah, Taiwanese people should be able to do it. No. Well, Brian, I thank you very, very much for participating in an interview about Taiwan so that the kinky folk and anyone who sees this interview can, in, can appreciate our brothers and our sisters in Taiwan. Yes. We yes. don't. And, and we do have a, a Facebook page for, for Taiwanese rubber men. So if you just uh, search uh, Taiwan rubber men, then you can find the, the group and then everyone's welcome to join. Wonderful. Yeah. So at least you know somebody when you're in Taiwan. So you don't end up like wanting to do something and then uh, doesn't know where to go. Yeah. Brian, I thank you yeah. very, very much for participating. You're very welcome. Thank you for the chance as well.